You're invited to sing along with the choir. The words will be on the screen. Are you doing the class? I don't care who does it. But.
share that peace with one another in a way that feels safe. Let's be sure to wave to the people on YouTube. We are glad that you are joining with us as well. We're glad that everyone is worshiping with us today. Please be seated. Welcome this morning, this beautiful Easter morning to Amazing Grace Lutheran Church. We are so glad that you are here. My name is Pastor Susanna, and uh, we believe and teach that we come to this table by grace and not by right. So if you are worshiping with us today, you may receive communion with us today. We invite you to receive communion with us today. And that goes for the people who are worshiping on YouTube as well. And we'll talk a little bit later in the service about how that works. If you are worshiping on YouTube, we invite you to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. That helps you know when we have services coming up, and it helps YouTube suggest our videos to other people. There are maroon pads in each row of seats, and we invite you to fill those in sometime during the service. Um, that lets us know who was here, how many were here, and if we need to get in contact with you for any reason. And if you are worshiping at home and will be doing communion, this is a great time to gather your bread and your wine or juice. We'll prepare our hearts and minds for worship with the thanksgiving for baptism. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we have passed over from death to life with Jesus Christ, and we are a new creation. For this saving mystery and for this water, let us bless God who was, who is, and who is to come. We give you thanks, O God. For in the beginning, your spirit moved over the waters, and by your word, you created the world, calling forth life in which you took delight. Through the waters of the flood, you delivered Noah and his family. At the river, your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. We praise you for the gift of water that sustains life, and above all, we praise you for the gift of new life in Jesus Christ. Let us pray. God of mercy, we no longer look for Jesus. Please join in. We no longer look for Jesus among the dead, for he is alive and has become the Lord of life. Increase in our minds and hearts the risen life we share with Christ and help us to grow as your people toward the fullness of eternal life with you through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, 
now and forever. Amen. I'd like to invite any kids who are here to come up. And if you would sit down here facing me like you're used to doing lately. Hello, hello, hello. So I want to give out some boxes. Um, Henry. And I know Caitlin's not here. Jacoby, no. Taven, no. Alexa, there you go. Tyler, he's away. Finn, there you go. Um, Aiden, there you go. Abby, here you go. Oh boy, big stretch. Aaliyah, she's not here today. Dominic. And does this, is that you, Ellie, okay? Does this belong to anybody? And does this belong to anybody? And if you are coming here today, I have a box for you too. And you can take that box home and decorate it, okay? So if we could move to the next slide. We have been reading a book all of Lent called Benjamin's Box. And it is about a little boy who lived at the time of Jesus. He saw Jesus come in with all the people waving their palm branches and shouting Hosanna. He got some fur from the donkey. He saw Jesus get arrested. He got a twig from the garden. He saw Jesus unfortunately get whipped and put, had a crown of thorns put on him. So there's a thorn and there's a little bit of a whip in there. He saw the soldiers gambling for his clothes and while he was on the cross. So we have a nail in there and we have a die. And he saw after Jesus died, he saw the tomb and he found a little piece of white cloth there and he put that in his box. So now we're coming to the end or we might say the beginning of the rest of the story. Jesus has been taken to the tomb and early the next day, let's go to the next slide. Early the next day, Benjamin went to the market for his mother. He used to enjoy the crowds in the city, but now they only reminded him of how everyone had turned against Jesus. He shuffled along without looking up. It's a miracle, shrieked a girl. Benjamin stopped in his tracks and listened. Jesus has risen from the dead. The stone's been moved. Sure enough, Benjamin turned and ran from the market and up toward the tomb. Now, I've been to Jerusalem. It's not very far. It's a pretty, pretty short run. Could it possibly be true? Could Jesus have risen from the grave? In his heart, he believed it could be. It must be. He ran even faster. And sure enough, when he got to that tomb, the stone was rolled away. He fell to his knees and thanked God. And when he stood up, he, he picked up a stone that must have crumbled from the big stone. And so each of you gets to have a stone for your... So you need to reach up to me, and I will reach down to you. There we go. You each get a stone. Did you get a stone, Aiden? There you go. Oh, how cool. Here we go, Ellie, and here we go, Levi. Did everyone get a stone? Okay, good. So let's see what happens. With a joyful heart, he marched back down to town. Jesus was alive. He met a woman who was a friend of Jesus. I know the good news, he said. Jesus is alive. Yes, she smiled. Some of us have even seen him. He ran home and he told his parents and he put the stone in his box. What a treasure he had now. Next slide. During the next few days, Benjamin and Eli listened as the disciples told about how Jesus had appeared to them in various places. Jesus said that all this came to pass just so forgiveness could be preached to everyone. Oh yeah, where'd he go? There it is. 
there's your dice. He said that once we saw all these things, now we can go out to tell others the good news of his forgiveness. And Benjamin smiled. He understood that Jesus had forgiven him too, and he wanted to share the good news. He ran home, he got his box, he sat on some steps in the city, and he gathered all his friends around him. And his friends seemed to include a lamb, a goat, a donkey, and some birds as well. So those are pretty good friends to have. And a deer, yes, yes. So the children drew, close, drew closer, and it seems like the animals drew closer too. Maybe they wanted to eat the hay out of the box. Okay, the, they listened, and one by one, Benjamin took out each item. He explained how he got it and what it all meant. And so who you see, he said, the treasure is really Jesus. Because of what Jesus did on the cross and because Jesus rose again, we are all forgiven. And next slide. That night, Benjamin opened his box one more time before he went to bed. He looked at every single thing in his box, handling them all with love and care. And finally, he put the rock back in the box. And then he knelt and prayed. Dear God, thank you for letting me find all these special treasures. But most of all, he said, I thank you for sending me the greatest treasure of all. And who is that? Jesus. That's right. And help me to be a good servant for Jesus. Help me to tell everyone I know about the good news. <coughs> Amen. So... That's the end of one story, but it's the beginning of another because Benjamin is going to grow up and he's going to tell everybody about Jesus. And to help you do that, you each get one of these books. So you can remember what happened to Benjamin and what happened to Jesus. You can read this and you can look at the things that are in your box. Okay, there you go and there you go. And could you, Henry, could you hand one to Levi? If you just got a box today, take it home and decorate it however you like. And as you read the book, you can see all the pictures that we looked at, and you can look at all the things that are in your box to help you remember and help you tell the story to other people too, okay? All right, well, I think Miss Joanne has some fun things for you to do. She is there in the back, and it looks like maybe Miss Kaylee's gonna help too, right? All right, it's been good to see you guys. Aiden, Aiden, you can take your book and you can go back, okay? Take your book and take your box. There you go. <laughs> All right, I invite the reader to come up for our lessons. Good morning. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-matured wines, of rich food filled with marrow, and well-matured wines strained clear. And he will destroy on this mountain the shroud that is cast over all peoples, the sheet that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever. Then the Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces, and the disgrace of his people he will take away from all the earth, for the Lord has spoken. It will be said on this day, Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him, so that he might save us. This is the Lord for whom we have waited. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We'll read responsively Psalm 118. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. Let Israel say, The Lord is my strength and my might. He is not my salvation. There are glad songs of victory in the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord. I shall not die, but I shall live. And bring out the of the Lord. The Lord has punished me severely. But he did not give me over to death. 
Open to me the gates of righteousness. That I may enter through them and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. The righteous shall enter through it. I thank you that you have answered me and have become my salvation. This is the Lord's doing. This is a day that the Lord has made. This is the word of the Lord. The New Testament reading is 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 through 11. Now I should remind you, brothers and sisters, of the good news that I proclaim to you, which you in turn received, in which also you stand, through which also you are being saved, if you hold firmly to the message that I proclaim to you, unless you have come to believe in vain. For I handed on to you as of first importance what I in turn had received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve. Then he appeared to more than 500 brothers and sisters at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have died. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to someone untimely born, he appeared also to me. For I am the least of the apostles, unfit to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace towards me has not been in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me. Whether then it was I or they, so we proclaim, and so you have come to believe. This is the word of the Lord.
Please rise as you're able for the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. John. I think you're glory to you, O Lord. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, they've taken the Lord out of the tomb and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciples set out and went towards the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came following him and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple who reached the tomb first also went in, and he saw and believed, for as yet they did not understand the scripture, that he must rise from the dead. Then the, the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? For whom are you looking? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary! She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabuni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord, and told them all that he had said these things to her. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Brothers and sisters, dear friends in Christ, grace to you and peace from God our Father and our risen Lord. Amen. When I was a little girl, I lived in Maine. But we would go to my grandmother's farm to spend every summer and every Christmas there. And it was an idyllic place for children. It had ponds with fish to catch, a barn with a hayloft, a huge yard with dogs, ponies to ride, a flower and vegetable garden, lots of toys, and cats in the house. Now, my cousins, who lived closer to our grandmother, got to see her more often. And I always felt a little jealous when I would hear about the fun they had had when I wasn't there. Like when the dog got out into the cow pasture and got all muddy and slimy and worse. Or when they went to another cousin's wedding and had a lot of fun. I particularly remember them talking about the walks that they were now old enough to take down the gravel country road. They were now allowed to go past the barn, take the left at the fork in the road, and cross over not only the first bridge, not only the second bridge, but the third bridge. Crossing the third bridge. That sounded so cool to me. And I longed to be able to do it. I thought and thought about what the third bridge must be like. And I thought, wow, 
When I'm old enough and I get a chance to go, everyone will know how brave I am and how cool I am because I crossed the third bridge. Well, when I was probably six or seven, we kids made up our minds to go walking down the road one day. We crossed the first bridge, which was barely more than a culvert. And then a little later, the second, which wasn't much bigger. And my cousin said, the third bridge is down the road and around that corner there. I was so excited. I would finally get to cross it. Next slide. Now this is what I expected to see. <laughs> a rope bridge going over a deep ravine. I suppose I got this image of what a bridge would look like, a big bridge, the third bridge, from television shows like Gilligan's Island, or even more likely, and I'm dating myself, from the Banana Splits show. Does anyone remember that? A couple of people? Yep, yep, all right. And remember it had the show within the show, Danger Island? Uh-oh, Chongo. <laughs> and they were always getting into trouble and crossing bridges like this. And I thought that's what I was going to cross. Instead, this is not the actual bridge, but it's like it. This is what I saw. <laughs> I was so disappointed. I mean, I was crushed with disappointment. This, this, this was the third bridge? If I had known bad words then, I probably would have said some. That's how crestfallen I felt. And as you can see, I've never quite gotten over it. <laughs> now, this is a silly example. But all of us have disappointments every day, all through our life, some small, some great. A friend doesn't call, or plans to meet up with a friend fall through. A job doesn't work out. Someone says something hurtful, and you're so disappointed in them. And bigger ones, a marriage ends, a relationship breaks up, someone gets critically ill. We don't make the team, or we make the team and we keep losing, or we realize that what we had hoped for in life is not what we really wanted or needed after all. And death really is the biggest disappointment of all. I know everyone here in this room has felt that, the lost hopes and dreams, the final reality of it all. Now, Mary Magdalene knew that crushing disappointment as she watched Jesus die on the cross. What a horrifying disappointment to realize that the man she thought was the Son of God was just gone. This good man, this kind man, this gentle man, this man who had welcomed her and treated her like an equal this man who had shown her love and compassion, who had shown her God, was dead. She was sad, yes, and angry too. But the disappointment of this devastating loss must have been overwhelming. Because the most important person in the world, she thought, had been tortured until he had just given up his breath without even struggling, just like any other man. And now everything that had given her life meaning had just disappeared. Sad, angry, and just so dismally disappointed that the man who had shown her God was just a man after all. Still, Mary rose early in the morning to go to the tomb. The Gospel of John doesn't mention why Mary went there. It's the other Gospels who say that the women wanted to anoint the body. In the case of John, Mary seems, to want, seems simply to want to be present at the tomb, despite or maybe even because of the great disappointment and emptiness she felt. Because when Mary went to the tomb, there was only one fact that she knew. Jesus was dead. Her Lord, her friend, her leader, her teacher... Dead. This was no pretend death. She had seen Jesus' body, and it had no life in it. It was wounded and bruised and dead. And then, and let's go back to that opening slide. 
then yet one more disappointment. She came to the tomb and there was nothing, no one. The tomb was empty except for some cloth. Jesus was gone. His body had been stolen or moved or desecrated. She could not even mourn properly. I imagine that her disappointment and grief so clouded her judgment that she could not quite understand what was being said to her. The angel said, woman, why are you weeping? And she said to them, they have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. So lost in the disappointment that she couldn't even see the other reason that might exist for Jesus' body not to be there. And even when she turns and sees Jesus, she does not recognize him. How could she? Through her tears and disappointment, it's not until she hears Jesus say her name that light finally begins to dawn, and then light crashes onto her like a thunderbolt. This, friends, is what Easter is really about, the sure and certain knowledge and the utter crushing disappointment of death only to be hit by a lightning strike, that the tomb is empty, the stone has been rolled away, and Jesus is alive. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Is it any wonder that Mary didn't even see this great good news at first? Is it any wonder that she didn't even recognize Jesus? Is it any wonder that it took time for the other disciples to overcome their disappointment and comprehend what Mary had told them? But Jesus was alive. Jesus is alive. And what this means is the end of the great disappointment of death forever. Our disappointment will turn to joy because Jesus lives. Our disappointment can no longer rule our lives because Jesus lives and we too will live. No matter what circumstance we find ourselves in, no matter what disappointment, even when the third bridge turns out to be nothing, Jesus is alive, Jesus is Lord, and Jesus is with us. So let's take this opportunity to revel in the knowledge that Jesus walks through locked doors, appears outside the empty tomb, speaks to the disciples and knows them. Jesus is alive. Jesus is here right now with us. Jesus knows us by name. He called Mary by name, and he calls us by name too. And nothing, not our fear, not our dread, not our isolation, not any disappointment, not even death itself can ever change that. Sure, we'll still have disappointments and triumphs. That's the way of the world. But the way of the Lord is to end all disappointment forever with the promise of life eternal. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Amen. I invite you to rise as we sing, Morning Has Broken.
of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated for the prayers. And the responses for the prayers will be on the screen. Rejoicing that Jesus is risen and love has triumphed over fear, let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need of good news. Holy God, we pray for the body of Christ, the church. Where the church is privileged, grant it humility. Where the church is fractured, heal it. Where the church is persecuted, protect it. Guide all to embody Christ's love in the world. God of grace, life-giving God, we pray for the earth, your good creation. Join our prayers with branches lifted in praise and roaring waters of new life, that together we may proclaim Easter hope. God of grace, receive our prayer. Merciful God, we pray for all peoples and nations, free oppressed communities from occupation, exploitation, and abuse. Teach leaders your ways of justice. Be with the people of the Holy Land in Ukraine and empower peacemakers and all who work to end violence and strife. God of grace, receive Liberating God, we pray for people everywhere who long for good news. Roll away the stones that keep people from living with dignity and wholeness. Breathe new life and hope into people struggling to make it through each day. Support those who are ill especially Julie Ambrose, Amanda Castle, Colleen Chimelko, Dan Kosnick, Debbie Emmons, Larry Gentry, Diane Gilbert, Brad Heath, Lindsay Huddleston, Patrick Klimowitz, Carol Cook, Matthew Lambrix, Roger Lamont, Bob and Lorna Leary, Ann Locker, The Lore Family, Laura Lesniak, Mike Martinson, Marilyn McQueen, Trish McMinn, Deborah Nelson, Debbie Palmer, Bruce Polzinski, Bob and Barb Potter, Mason Stabe, Mary Stevick, Killian Van Stee, Jennifer, Julie Kay, Fonica, Elam Otto, Jean Close, Ritesh Nelmar, Deepika Nelmar, Lucille Staff, Mary Haller, Diane Gafke, Patrick Klimowitz, Mary Almale, Judy Holston, Jim and Don Pierce, Mike Simmons, and all those we name aloud or in our hearts. Pray for Robert. God of grace, <laughs> loving God, we pray for this community of faith and for your spirit in our midst. Feed us at your Easter table and fill us with your wisdom that we may serve and care for others. God of grace, <laughs> eternal God, we remember those who have gone before us in death. 
Renew our trust in your promises of eternal life that we may live with joyful courage and compassion. We remember and pray for all who mourn, especially the Perkins, Campbell, Martin, Tribu, Horn, Cross, and Yasso families, that they may know the healing power of your love. God of grace, into your hands, most merciful God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your abiding love through Jesus Christ, our resurrected and living Lord. Amen. Let us with gladness present the offering of our life and labor to the Lord. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God. We're so grateful for anything that you might give, and you're invited to bring it forward uh, to the offering plate as we sing. like to use a communion kit, please raise your hand and an usher will bring one to you. And remember too that um, we are happy to come to you at your seat to bring you communion. If you would like that to happen, just speak to one of the ushers as they direct you forward. If you are worshiping from home and doing communion from home, please hold or touch the bread and the wine as we pray. And when it comes time to receive communion, the ushers will direct those of you in person forward. Please rise as you're able. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death and in rising has brought us to eternal life. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. 
Do this for the remembrance of me. With this bread and this cup, we remember our Lord's Passover from death to life as we proclaim faith's mystery, Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. O God of resurrection and new life, pour out your Holy Spirit on us and on these gifts of bread and wine. Bless this feast, grace our table with your presence. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The risen Christ is made known to us in the breaking of the bread. Come and eat at God's table. Please be seated. If you are using a communion kit, as you take the bread, this is the body of Christ given for you. And as you take the wine or juice, this is the blood of Christ shed for you. The ushers will direct you forward. We are going to have two stations, one for each side of the church. Come forward, you can receive bread, and then take either wine or juice from the trays. Wine is red and the juice is clear.
Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. Shepherding God, you have prepared a table before us and nourished us with your love. Send us forth from this banquet to proclaim your goodness and share the abundant mercy of Jesus, our Redeemer and friend. Amen. The God of resurrection power, the Christ of unending joy, and the spirit of Easter hope bless you now and always. Amen. Amen. All right, for a few announcements. First of all, Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. All right. So be sure to check your grace notes. That's the bulletin for any weekly announcements. And uh, we have an Easter egg hunt after worship. Miss Joanne, where should they go for that? Okay, so go to the outside the learning center where you all do Sunday school and meet Miss Joanne. And also after worship, there is a light brunch in the, the social hall. All of you are invited to join us. You go straight out from the sanctuary and then hang a left and you'll be able to see and smell the food and the yummy good eats. <laughs> Bible study does resume Wednesday, April 3rd and uh, we do that both in person and on Zoom and I send out the Zoom link sometime, usually on Wednesday morning. Uh, we are um, hoping to get a group together. Do you want us to talk about it? Thank you. <laughs> you know more than I do. It's a lot. It's a lot. <laughs> so this, this is down at uh, this is down at Colmarco Park. Okay, they, they they do this every couple of years, so it has been a while since they've done it. Uh, but uh, a number of uh, sports figures, uh, musicians. Uh, other people will speak about their faith in Christ uh, at, in the morning, and then in the afternoon, then we'll all enjoy a baseball game. Now, I just want to tell you that I'd like uh, everybody to sign up. The sooner we sign up, uh, the, the better the possibility that we're going to get seating all together. Uh, I'd like to get at least 20 or 30 people to go uh, once you sign up. Uh, once I see that we have enough people, then I'll, I'll let everybody know, uh, you know the deadline for signing up and what, how much it's going to cost. The minimum tickets are $28, uh, and then it goes up from there. So but we really like to find uh, seating all together. So the, the sooner you can sign up, the better. Thank you. Question? What day of the week is that? Is that Sunday? Or is it Sunday? Oh, it's on a, a Sunday. Oh, no, I'm sorry. It's on a Saturday. 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 Okay. Yes. June 22nd. Yeah, it's on a Saturday. All right. Any other questions about that? Okay. Great. And Dan, would you like to come up and talk about, do you want me to say anything about Jukebox Jam? Okay, it's a fun variety show, 50s and 60s variety show. End of April, there are three dates. Dan, can you wave your hand so you can see Dan for tickets? And it should be a whole lot of fun. Sounds great. All right. Uh, blanket. I can't believe we're doing blankets already, but uh, we're getting the word out to start bringing blankets in. Uh, St. Peter's Lutheran Church here in Warren always collects these. 
um, and gives them out to people. Um, the deadline is October 31st, so you have time to do your spring cleaning and <laughs> find some blankets. But it's just a good thing to keep in mind, and we do have a collection box yes. here, so you don't have to put them away in your house. You can bring them right here. All right, any other announcements? Anybody? Okay, very good. If you are worshiping with us virtually, please know that we would welcome to welcome you coming and visiting us in person anytime, and we hope you will sometime. Okay. rise as you're able for our sending song. Thank you. 
Alleluia, go in peace, rejoice, and be glad. Thanks be to God. Alleluia.